Right, I think we're live. Hi everyone. Hi, it's Eve Oxbury here, Editor of Professional Beauty. Um, welcome to another week of uh, Professional Beauty webinars. So today I've got Angela Bartlett with me, as you can see, um, and Angela's going to be talking about uh, the changing face of customer service post-COVID-19 and how someone's can create an impact on comeback. Um, now, Angela is, uh, many of you will know her, she's Managing Director of Hidden Beauty, which is a mystery shopping company, um, and also the company that has for many years carried out the official visits on behalf of the Professional Beauty Awards. So Angela knows a huge amount about what makes good customer service and bad customer service. So she'll have lots of uh, insights to share. She's also runs her own salon and um, has been involved with bad tech for many years and has, yeah, is quite an industry pro. So Angela, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Can everybody hear me okay? I think so. If anyone is having any trouble with the sound on the webinar platform, um, if you can refresh your screen, we have found that does help sometimes. And if you do still have any problems, we are streaming this live over on our Facebook page as well for Professional Beauty. So if you have any trouble with this platform, watch over there. Yeah. Yeah, um, someone's saying a bit stop start, but it could be the internet connection for, at your end. So yeah well yes hello um i'm angela bartlett steve says and i'm the owner and founder of hidden beauty uk and my team and i um, my team and i have looked after the official um visits for professional beauty awards gosh for i think this would have been the 10th year but it had to be cut short because of the um, covid19 um so by sending industry experts to actually visit the finalist businesses, we can really establish how worthy it is of winning a prestigious national awards such as the Professional Beauty Award. And this is extremely important as uh, that business will carry forward the Professional Beauty logo for a whole year. So it's a process that we take a great deal of care over as it has um, such a huge sense of responsibility attached to it. Um, so as official visitors, we evaluate lots of areas of a business. And one of the areas we assess and specialise in is the one that we're focusing on today, which is customer service. And customer service is quite a wide brief. So I've titled this presentation, Making a Change, uh, the Changing Face of Customer Service Post COVID-19. I should probably have called it the changing face of customer service post lockdown, um, as it's very clear that COVID-19 won't have gone away by the time our spas and salons are permitted to reopen, uh, obviously until a vaccine's found, and this may not be for quite some time yet. And of course, this may not be the last virus that we all face together in our lifetime either. So changes will have to take place in our industry, certainly in the short term and if not the medium and the long term for everyone's safety. So we all need to make a change for our success. So um, is the, right, can you, everyone see the presentation? Yeah. I'm just gonna so, turn off my camera now so that people can see you, but I'll be back. <laughs> So customer service together with professionalism, hygiene and treatment standards um, are personal passions of mine. I've been um, a chairman for BATAC and SIBTAC. Uh, I've been a teacher, inter international examiner. Um, I've worked on various BBC programmes such as The Fixer with Alex Polizzi and also The Apprentice. And I also help with various awards programmes and I'm also a salon owner myself. And over the past 36 years, I've been really committed to raising standards in our industry. And I understand the challenges that lie ahead for all of us, whether you're a spa or a salon. And, you know, there may be cha challenges that will appear that no one can anticipate yet as well. So we all need to be flexible and we need to be able to adapt to make the necessary changes as they arrive. arrive. So there's no denying that COVID-19 has been a huge challenge for everyone to face um, from a personal and professional point of view. Most of us have suffered some sort of loss. It will either be perhaps a friend, a family member, and certainly um, for lots of people from a business perspective too. But I'm a firm believer that every cloud does have a silver lining. And I do believe there are some amazing opportunities for us to make a change for the better in our industry too. Coming out of the other side, 
uh, improved and stronger and with an even more caring and professional image. So we all need to be positive and use this pandemic to our advantage. And I think to be the industry that comes out of it as a forward thinking, caring and importantly, a customer focused one. So how are you going to use this opportunity to create an impact in customer service for your clients on your comeback? So we're going to explore this together. To me, it feels like we're on a very long and new bridge spanning the old world of what customer service used to mean and leading to a brand new world of a different type of customer service. Now, People talk about getting back to normality. And of course, everyone does want a bit of normality in such an uncertain time, but it will have to be a different type of normality due to the nature of, of the work that we carry out. So the first element of your new and improved customer service is improved communication. Um, what you should already have done and still be doing with your new customer service is to keep in touch with your clients far more regularly than you have been. How will it depend on what best suits your business and your individual clients' needs? And um, this may be text messages, telephone calls, electronic emails, newsletters, perhaps handwritten notes for those who aren't computer literate, um, social media, and probably a, a mixture of some of or all of these methods. So there isn't a one size fits all really for every business. Um, but whatever correspondence you used previously, I would in, I would increase it. Um, not to a point where clients feel overwhelmed or irritated by it, but just to feel more reassured, um, better informed and also uplifted by it too. And of course, try and make it a two way communication process. Really listen to what your clients needs are during lockdown and it will be different for everyone. Um, and try to fulfill these needs where you can. I'm sure you've all been doing lots of, of different things to keep in touch with clients, and there've been some great ideas and advice from other industry experts uh, here on the professional beauty webinars, whether it's uh, tips on how clients can manage things at home, uh, doing contactless delivery of, of home care products, um, working with local publications to help spread well-being messages and sort of beauty first aid at home. There are many things that can be done and now is certainly the time to be working hard to ensure that you are at the forefront of your client's mind and that you are there to help and support them. This is a time where clients will really appreciate support and that support will translate in their minds as good customer service. And you know, this type of support may be a service that clients will expect as part of ongoing good customer service to a greater or lesser extent. So, you know, they may have got used to that extra help and service. In the future, uh, you know, if a client falls ill, can you drop off or send out products to their home? Uh, if you, they don't have enough time to get into the salon, perhaps you can provide them with an at-home facial kit. In the eyes of our awards visitors, it's where the business goes that extra mile to make you feel cared for as a client that makes your business stand out from the others in such a competitive market. So you need to think about all these things um, you know, what your client's future customer service demands may be, um, how you're going to cope with these potential new demands once you're back in the spa or salon, and also how you can use them to your advantage to enhance your business going forward. It really is a time for change. So one of the things our official visitors assess during the awards uh, process is the booking process. And this may be your first big additional management challenge when the lockdown is lifted. How are you going to manage and cope with the possible influx of numerous clients all trying to book as soon as your business is open again. Now is the time to plan. Think about your booking priorities. How are you going to prioritize because you can't fit in all the clients at once? Think about your staff rotors. Um, think about additional staff possibly if you can find them or uh, most importantly, additional staff hours to fulfill your client's booking needs and also to present a smooth and well-organized booking process for your clients. 
Of course, uh, online booking may play a part in all of this, um, but telephone calls will also be a large part of the booking process. You know, especially if clients can't find available appointments online due to demand, they're likely to pick up the phone, aren't they? Uh, but to cope with demand, just be careful who you enlist to answer those booking calls. Our awards visitors always say that the initial impression created by that booking process is often their lasting one. If the booking's been made easy with helpful advice and operator courtesy, etc., this generally sets the scene for a really good visit. First impressions do always count. And although you may say, well, you know, these are existing clients who are making these bookings, it's different. I'm just saying that the booking process post virus, I think, will be as important to them and to your business as the very first time they ever made contact with you in your business. And in some instances, even more so. So making that booking process as efficient and effective as possible is very important. Um, according to uh, research, it's quite interesting, customers don't always feel extra grateful when you deliver more than you promise. However, they always feel let down and possibly angry if you deliver less than promised. So it's still better to under promise and over deliver so you can make sure you never break this really important customer service contract between you and your clients. So do keep your word. If you're busy, which you're probably likely to be, and you say you're going to get back to a client to them perhaps that afternoon or evening, please do it. It's part of building trust and that trust is a part of great customer service. A fast response to clients' inquiries, booking requests, resolving issues, um, whatever it may be, is one of the cornerstones of great customer service and something our awards visitors nearly always comment on. So if you don't have the full answer at that moment, a fast response just to say that you're finding out the answer or working on that answer is always appreciated, both by our awards visitors and also by your clients. So now is the time to think about what processes, procedures and help you're going to put into place to ensure that when bookings, requests or issues come rolling in will make your clients think your business delivers great customer care. Our official, official visitors always look for how well set up a business is to deliver it in this really essential business area. So when lockdown is lifted, and it's safe for us to reopen our spas and salons again. Are our clients going to rush back into our businesses or are they going to be wary about coming back? What will the client response be like? And will we need to win some of our clients back? Are they going to view spas and salons as a means of escape from isolation or family stress? And are they desperate to get their treatments carried out? Or are they going to be a bit apprehensive and view them perhaps as places of social gathering and cross infection? Who knows? Uh, have they struggled to keep on top of things at home or have they managed very nicely, thank you, without their regular spa or salon visit? Um, particularly the more mature clients or those with underlying health conditions, they may need a little bit of encouragement to come back. And of course, every business is different and every client is different but I am guessing that you will most likely have a mixture of those two types of clients. Either way, I believe that most clients will have different expectations from their spa or salon post lockdown compared to those they had before. So what will clients be expecting? Well, I think that most clients will be expecting for you to put their health and safety at the very top of their customer care and customer service needs. And immaculate hygiene levels will become a priority and hopefully the new norm. When our visitors visit businesses for the awards, standards of hygiene and the processes in place to avoid cross infection are taken very seriously. From reception onwards, general housekeeping standards and hygiene levels are checked thoroughly. For example, is there dust on the displays? Um, are the skirting boards clean? Is there dirt under the trolley? Are there adequate water testing processes in place for spa areas? 
Um, when was the last time the wax pot was cleaned or that bin emptied? Um, what are the disinfecting and sterilization methods for tools, etc.? So when this when during this time, when your business is closed, do ensure that you have improved processes and procedures in place for hygiene, for all treatments and all experiences and get them written into your manuals and get the staff updated in them too. And you're going to need ongoing staff briefing and uh, to, uh, to achieve this too. And do ensure all staff know about uh, cross infection, the difference between sanitization, disinfection, sterilization, and where these different methods need to be used. And I would suggest making your hygiene procedures much more visible, not just to staff, but also to clients as well. So um, for those of you who are therapy trained, uh, do you remember when you were at college and you, you had to inform your client that you were going to wash your hands before starting their treatment? Uh, I know I did when I trained all those years ago. Um, and you know, this wasn't such a bad thing because it did let clients know that you took hygiene seriously and that it was, an imp it was important enough to mention it too. So do go back to basics. But I do think clients are going to be expect uh, be expecting a little more than just good hand washing. I think most clients will be expecting gloves and masks for most treatments as a minimum, um, particularly in the short term. And, you know, with the rush of potential uh, clients wanting to come back into our business, we need to think about how we're going to ensure that those good hygiene standards are adhered to in the volume of clients that we may have to treat on going back. So don't cut corners and try not to run out of PPE in the rush. And you need to think and plan about that now. So how are you going to make your hygiene more visible to your staff and also to your clients? Well, if you haven't already done so, I would suggest introducing checklists, um, bar visible bathroom checklists, front of house checklists, treatment hygiene checklists, and inform clients what they can expect hygiene wise during their treatments and their visit to you. Uh, these measures, I think, will go a long way to re reassure clients that everything is being done in the interests of hygiene and their health. And then business owner, therapist and client can all work together to ensure that those hygiene procedures are adhered to. And not just for the health of the client and the therapist, but for the greater good and the health of the nation too. Um, and I think as never before, we've all felt so sort of interconnected as it really is um, an unprecedented health and economic double challenge for the nation to face as a whole. So working together should really be much easier than it ever has been before. So we all really need to be responsible now so that we can minimise a second wave of infection taking place. And, you know, a second wave could easily take confidence out of our sector completely or for a much uh, longer period of time. So we all need to be responsible for that. So there will be lots of additional problem solving and planning at this time. Um, so start planning now. I would uh, walk yourself through your customer journey. It may not be possible for, to get, for you to get into your spa and salon now, but go through it in your head. Walk yourself through what your clients encounter when they come to your business. Uh, draw up a list of all those client touch points in your business and those potential sites for cross infection. You know, from the moment they enter your building, think about the doors. Are you going to place hand sanitizers outside of your doors and at the key client touch points? Are you going to open the doors for your clients? It depends on the size of your business, of course. And um, the official visitors and I are always impressed when finalists open doors for their clients. And you, you see it in, the, in, in salons and spas and just from a good manners point of view and a good customer service point of view. But this may be even more important now from a hygiene and cross infection avoidance one, one now uh, going forward. So also think about how you're going to handle those waiting areas. Are we going to be able to have waiting areas? Start planning now also for communal areas such as relaxation lounges uh, to respect that really important customer social distancing. Prepare and plan now for creating great customer care on your comeback.
So which leads me on to talk about uh, timekeeping. Therapists must keep strictly to commercially acceptable timings. Previously in our old world of customer service, the hazards for a business of poor treatment timing was that keeping clients waiting was inconsiderate and to underrun or overrun on treatment time was unprofessional. You may know how it feels. For example, some of our official visitors do, um, myself. If, for example, you're left to get undressed for a massage and you're laying on the treatment couch waiting for your massage therapist to return. This sometimes may only be for a couple of minutes um, for a therapist, but to a client, it can feel like a very long time and it can make you sometimes feel like you're being shortchanged, particularly on a time based treatment such as a massage. Or on the other hand, your half leg wax, which should take about 15 minutes, is taking forever as every time um, the therapist uh, talks to you or chats to you, she stops waxing. So that 15 minute service suddenly becomes a half an hour service or even longer. And, you know, recognising that clients have other commitments and sticking to commercial timing was and is and I think always will be a good part of customer service. So. Um, not least that not adhering to commercial treatment time seriously and adversely affects profitability in your business. As you know, treatments are priced out on costs and time is an essential part of those costs. So taking an extra 10 minutes to carry out a service over the course of a year could lose a business thousands of pounds in profit and could be the difference between making a success of a business or going under. And also, you know, in our new world of customer service, keeping clients waiting will put pressure on communal areas such as waiting rooms by possibly affecting social distancing and thereby creating the additional hazard for you running your business safely. So very, very important to keep to commercial timing. And then going back to the wearing of PPE, masks and gloves bring up their own challenges, don't they? Um, many of our treatments involve touch and the touch with gloves is just not the same as touch with ungloved hands. So for treatments such as manicure, pedicure, uh, waxing, this is not an issue. But with massage and other touch therapies, this does hold its own particular challenges. And then there's the wearing of masks, which presents another a challenge because clients are used to seeing our smiling faces. Um, so in the absence of a smile, body language, uh, together with verbal communication, is going to be even more important now. So these are the challenges that you need to consider and also update your team in now. Think about active listening and this will become an even more essential part of good customer care and service. Some clients may have a lot to talk about and share uh, post virus. So, you know, it will be have a, it will be some time since you've uh, treated them so there may have been changes in their lifestyle and their habits affecting the type of treatment they need you'll need to be asking them questions and really listening to what they have to say um, it will be a time when you may need to prescribe different home care products as you them, you prescribed them before due to these changes so I would also, talking about active listening and chatting to the clients, brief the staff in the ability to also steer the conversations from doom and gloom, which some clients may have a tendency to, such as, you know, oh gosh, a second wave of infection is going to come, or such and such a person died. Uh, try to get them to steer the conversation to positivity, but of course, with a, a sensitive attitude, um, as most people will have experienced loss to a greater or lesser extent. So, you know, they need to be sensitive and tactful as well. But attitude is everything and a positive, happy attitude goes a long way in providing good customer service. Our awards visits measure attitude uh, as well as a host of other staff attributes and a warm and caring attitude with positive language does go a really long way. And it's going to be even more important now in the absence of a, a smile hidden behind a mask. So now is the time to look at ways to enhance your client experience with minimal contact. Um, is it time to replace magazines with wall mounted TV screens? Are you really going to want to pick up a magazine that's just been touched by someone else? 
you know, never before as a, a magazine rack or a coffee table with magazines on them looked more hazardous, really. Um, so you need to think about that. Uh, think about refreshment stations and tester stands too, all those extra touches that our awards visitors deem to be good customer service touches and service enhancements may now be perceived by your clients as cross-infection danger zones. So are you going to want to pick up that piece of fruit or a handful of nuts from a refreshment station that could have been coughed, touched or sneezed over by, by the last client? Probably not. And um, would you be happy to pick up a product on a tester stand that could have been touched by numerous other clients? I mean, some clients may not bother, but I really think uh, most will. Um, and we mentioned TV screens. In fact, try and use technology to its fullest to help you in your business from uh, online booking, contactless payments, um, social media and emails for education um, and information rather than your paper leaflets and paper pamphlets. Think about your tester stands and experience corners with, you know, opportunities to touch and feel products. You know, it's a time perhaps to ensure that tester stands are therapist or operator controlled. Uh, should your refreshment stations be replaced with individually served refreshments to avoid cross infection? I'm sure we'll get lots of guidance from the government, but, you know, think ahead and plan now for what might be in store for our spas and salons. And then going back to payment methods, you know, are you still accepting cash and how is this going to be handled? Um, and what about your paper based client satisfaction forms? If you're still using paper based forms, maybe it's time to replace with a, an online questionnaire. Um, you know, your CRM may have this sending out an automatic questionnaire after their booking. Or you may want to use something like SurveyMonkey um, or MailChimp or something like that to get feedback from your clients. Uh, the checkout process and measurement of client satisfaction are areas that our awards visitors check because it is such an important area of a business. So, uh, so many questions. And of course, the big question is, will all this take longer and will all this cost more? And the answer is probably uh, yes, uh, particularly in the short term. It's definitely going to take longer and it will most likely uh, cost more too but it will be a cost that you simply cannot afford to compromise on going forward, you know, in our brave new world of new and improved customer service. Your clients need to trust you and put their safety first. And ultimately it has to be the client who pays for these costs, which will be reflected in the price of a treatment. Please do not compromise on safety or limit customer care or lower standards to compete with someone who's perhaps working from a carpeted room somewhere with no cross infection measures in place, not adhering to public health and safety requirements. You cannot compete with those people. Always put your client's safety and hygiene and customer service first so that your clients will continue to, to trust you. And educate both staff and clients on what it takes to make a safe and professional work environment for them. Sometimes they don't realise the amount of work and the cost and the effort that goes into making a safe um, place for them to have their treatments in. So time wise and with the right procedures and training in place, uh, it should become second nature for therapists and therefore more cost effective possibly as time goes by. But initially, there will be additional costs involved. And it's for you as a business now to think about who is going to absorb these costs. And, you know, it's, if you are running a business, at some point, this does have to be, have to be passed on to the client. So lots to think about. Um, and you wouldn't be in business if you didn't like a challenge. And I'm sure that we can all think of other customer service challenges that uh, have not been mentioned here as well. And of course, they'll be different for every uh, business. But whatever you do, do it to reassure your customers so that they can trust you to do the right thing and that you are prepared to change as a business to achieve that. So going forward, there's uh, lots of um, great resources on the Professional Beauty website. So do take advantage of these and take time to look at them. Uh, Hidden Beauty can help you too. We have lots of useful customer service models and other tools to help your business 
as well as mystery shopping um, and access to great coaches and trainers in our industry if you need any help. So if we can be of any help to you, don't hesitate to contact us. Our contact details are here. Don't be shy about contacting us. And you never know, we may see you perhaps in as one of the awards finalists next year. I uh, think now about preparing your business and going forward for success next year, perhaps with entering for an award. So I hope this has given you some food for thought. Put some of these things in place to give your clients that virtual hug by showing them that you care about them as individuals and society as a whole. And this really is an opportunity to raise the standards in the spa and, and salon arena to a new level and be, by, be perceived um, as even better by the general public. So think about what you're going to do now to make a change. Make your clients experience and customer service even better than it was before. And investing in customer service really is the keys to long term business success. So thanks very much for giving up your time to watch. And um, it's always a privilege to gain the attention of fellow indus industry professionals. And I hope that my presentation has given you some inspiration and some help, too. So thank you. Back over to Eve. Hi, Eve. Well, Hi. thanks so much. I'm just going to switch us back to Mo, where people can see us both. Hi. Thanks so much. That's really interesting. I think, um, particularly from my side, I, I thought the points about the consultation becoming even more important than than before to kind of keep up with the changes that have happened to clients as much as the rest of us during this shutdown period. And then, and also, it's going to be even more important, as you say, to differentiate your sound from those that might be cheaper but aren't um, adhering to the kind of health and safety guidelines that you are so really interesting thank you there's been lots of questions coming through as you were speaking so um i'm just gonna have a little look through and um i think the first one we have was lizzie bath who's asked do you envisage gloves for massage treatments or do you think massage and facial won't be feasible during the initial stages do you think it's, it's possible to do them i suppose wearing gloves Gosh, I suppose it is possible. I mean, something will be lost, won't it, um, without having that touch? And we would just have to be guided by the government, really, as to what's safe and allowable. Uh, whatever we feel is right for our industry, you know, will be um, overridden, really, by government guidelines. We really do have to just pay attention to uh, to what's going to be permissible when we go back. I expect some facial treatments, yes, gloves is doable but massage and um, it's going to take a whole you know touch element away from it isn't it so we'll just have to wait and see yeah absolutely and um, i mean there's been quite a few questions along those lines um so we've got caroline hurley saying how can we give facials and facial waxing safely again i suppose these treatments where it's going to be very hard to maintain any type of social distancing do you think that there are ways around this do you think that this will be something that will need to be put on hold for a while I think possibly anything in the nose or mouth area, um, any treatments, you know, electrolysis, facial waxing, uh, facials that are working in, in the mouth and nose area, I think probably will, will take much longer for us to get back to. Um, I think, I'm not sure, but um, I think that our model going back may be based on the German one that's come out so far. Um, and I've seen uh, the guidance for hairdressers and um, both a hairdresser and client have to wear masks. So, of course, if your client's having to wear a mask as well as you, then anything in that face and nose area is going to be quite impossible. But obviously, as time goes on and the guidelines are relaxed, then, of course, that will eventually become possible again. But how long that's going to take, uh, we just don't know at the moment. So we just have to wait and see. Thank you. And that does lead to the next question, which Melissa Shannon has asked. Is it acceptable to ask a client to wear a mask to an appointment? Again, I suppose we're going to have to be guided by what the government says, but it's a tricky one, isn't it? Because it's not something we'd ever would have imagined having to do. No, I think it goes back to educating your clients. You know, if you tell them the reason why they're having to use the mask, um, hopefully most clients will be compliant and on board with that whole safety and hygiene and working for the greater good. And um, so all you can do is educate them and um and hope that they, they comply. And I think as a therapist, if you have a client that won't do it, and it is a government guideline, um, just you won't be able to treat them. That would be my advice, because safety yeah. always comes first. 
And another question we've had, which is quite an interesting one, is from Michaela, who said, would you avoid having a waiting room at this time? So clients have to arrive bang on time for their appointment, but you don't have any kind of waiting area. I think it probably, well, again, depends on government guidance. I've seen the German model and I don't think they're allowing a waiting area. Um, so it would depend on perhaps on the size of your business. Um, can you keep them socially distanced uh, while they're waiting in that waiting area? Of course, everything they've touched would have to be sanitised before the next client. So it does uh, bring up quite a few issues with sanitization as well if you've already got them in the building and they might be touching things whilst they're waiting so it would make sense wouldn't it for people to arrive on time and for you to sit, just see that client especially initially but as time goes on and things improve um, then perhaps you know waiting areas will become um, you know less of a danger zone again definitely mm -hmm. absolutely um, and that sort of relates to the next question as well which um, from Gurdip who said what if your entrance is at the top of some stairs how can you come into the salon safely and not bump into someone leaving especially if your entrance and exit yeah. is the same i suppose these are all everyone's going to have their own personal considerations but i suppose um this is a good one there may need to be different um types of procedures depending on your salon layout yeah, your, everyone's business is different isn't it maybe you could have a sign outside that says you know wait until the last client has left um we're having that with our local post office at the moment as a sign outside and you know we're having to queue on the pavement to you know two meters apart like you do mm. with any business and then you wait for someone to come out before you can go in maybe think about having an intercom system or something like that so that they know when it's safe to come in and um, or maybe you escort the client out and then escort the next client in um, it got to, that's why I'm saying you know think now and plan ahead uh, so that's smart thinking by Gerdip she's already thinking ahead of how she's going to manage that so yeah. well done excellent and um, the next question we've got from Amanda who said great presentation thank you and um, would you recommend applying for the awards after a certain amount of time opening now I guess this is relating to the professional beauty awards and we do have actually as the um, entry criteria that you need to have been in business for at least a year by the time that the awards would happen so that we can see kind of a year's worth of decent trading so there is that but I suppose beyond that would you advise people to perhaps wait a little longer before they apply or what what would your thoughts be as yeah so you're gonna have an awful lot to think about aren't you when you first open your business but you know once you're back up and running why not have something exciting to look forward to you know if you feel you've got something special in your business and you want to go for that you know award-winning um, business title I would say definitely go for it but just don't overload yourself with too much too soon because it is quite a commitment to go in for the awards but such a great team builder uh, for your team and and you know and for your business and for your clients as well so yeah definitely go for it Excellent, thank you. And um, most of the comments here are just saying thank you so much and how helpful and, and interesting the presentation is. Oh, I think people are, yeah, there's loads and loads of positive comments. I think people really want some advice at the moment. It's such a, a, a tricky time when there's so much unknown. Um, we have got another couple of questions. Lizzie has asked, um, just working on the guest journey to stagger the arrival and departure, how would you advise expressing the importance to the client of sticking to the timings? Yes, we, there are always clients, aren't there, that never arrive on time. This is going to be quite an issue. Again, education, um, perhaps send them out emails. Um, if you have got those clients, that you know aren't going to arrive on time perhaps you know tell them to arrive a little bit prior to <laughs> just to get them there and um, that really is all about client education and perhaps even pick up the phone to those clients and say you know we just can't tell you how important it is that you know we stick to, to um you know very strict uh, treatment timings at this time so yes it's about information really and education and hoping that your clients will comply with that um, it is sort of outside of our control a little bit so all you can can do is, is do your best and educate and inform them. Excellent, thank you. And another question from Wendy Hogarth who said, I have a small beauty academy and I think I'd have to stagger student assessments, otherwise three to four and together. I suppose any thoughts on that really? It's, it's a different um, setup, but if people are doing training and, and assessing. Yeah, education is quite different, isn't it? Um, it's um, You would probably need to uh, follow whatever you know, government guidelines come out on the sort of training arena. Um, maybe, you know, obviously your um, theory work could be done online. But yeah, when you're doing the practicals, you're going to have to make sure that your premises are large enough to 
keep everybody apart um so yeah that really does bring up its own challenges doesn't mm. it yes so, government yeah. guidance, but for exactly. training and I, uh, we'll get some separate guidance on that hopefully, hopefully. Um, yeah there's one other question about what about wearing facial shields as well as masks any thoughts yes. on that i think we've yeah, seen a few products <laughs> I think anything you can do. I've also seen in the German model that you may need to have um, a perspex sheet at um, reception as well. So any any additional barriers that you can put in place, um, obviously, is going to be um, more costly, um, but really will give you um, that advantage on customer service. I think if your clients realise that you're really putting their their health and hygiene at the forefront, so any additional barriers you can put in place between you and the client is going to be an advantage at this time. So yeah, good thinking. Absolutely. And um, there's a couple of other questions that have come over from people watching on the Facebook page. Um, we've got one from Kerry who's saying, "I'm foreseeing that we'll have to add in an additional 15 or 20 minutes." turnaround time for every treatment for safe entry and exit and full cleaning and um, currently I'll struggle to make the numbers add up for this it's a great idea um, to stick to commercial timings but with all the extra challenges in place how do we balance the need for impeccable hygiene with costs it's a tricky one but yeah, when I say commercial timings, I mean not running over actually on treatment because you will have all those extra things to do as well, which will have to be factored in. So the commercial timings for the treatments are important. As you say, then you're going to your new commercial timing really is going to have to be extra timing for sanitizing, sterilizing, getting clients in and out as well. So your new commercial timing is going to be longer and is going to dif be difficult, I think, to make the numbers add up because it's such a labor intensive uh, type of business that we're in. So that's why I'm, I am suggesting, I know people have said, oh, don't, it's not a good time to put prices up, but you know, who's going to absorb those costs if it's not the clients, it's going to be us as businesses. And for some businesses that could be make or break. So it's a good time now to think about, um, you know, what things cost you, um, how much longer it's going to take and what realistically you're going to need to charge to make a profit and keep your business going mm, mm. absolutely i think that's the, the difficult thing at the moment i think everybody's been very wary of, of charging anybody for anything because we're all you know we're all struggling but i think you know going forward it's going to need to be really analyzed and looked at isn't it because i mean everyone is trying to run a business here as much as we need to care for clients. yes um, another question over from Facebook from Emma Dunkley who said, would you recommend a period, for example, a month where we get a reception team back to make sure that all clients are managed well when we do open and that we're all fully ready? So I suppose a pre-opening kind of training period. Yeah, I mean, I would be doing your pre-training now online. Um, do as much as you can to get ready because I think there'll be lots of clients who will be desperate to get back. Um, and you want to be able to offer them treatments as soon as you can. But, you know, you know your business um, and if you've got a massive reception team, uh, maybe you do need a, a, some time to sort that out. So, you know, tailor it to, to fit your own business. But I would say, you know, don't miss out on that initial rush because you know, as a business, you do need to make up some of the money that you, you know, undoubtedly will have lost while you, whilst you're being closed. So try and open as, as soon as you can, uh, but as safely and as well organised as you can. Absolutely. It's a balance, isn't it? Yeah. There's a, actually a comment from Lisa Young here who said, I'm going to add a surcharge per visit for PPE so that clients can understand that the increase in price reflects the additional cost to the business, not just a, a price increase for the sake of it, which is quite an interesting idea. It's an interesting concept, isn't it? And I think different things will work for, for different uh, businesses. And you know your, if you know your clients and you, you feel that that will work better for them to make those costs um, transparent and more visible, um, then I think that's you know for you to, to make that decision or uh, other people might just want to build those costs in. And um, it's, a, it's a choice, it's a personal choice for your business, um, but it will cost more, <laughs> definitely. And one other question over from the Facebook page is um, from Kerry, who said, we've sold lots of vouchers for specific treatments and we won't be able to carry out certain ones of those treatments, for example, facials probably at the moment. Would it be best to offer extensions on vouchers um, or... If somebody has bought a voucher but the treatment price has then increased after coronavirus is their best practice for that should they honor the original voucher price well um 
It depends, doesn't it, really? Um, you could say that, um, for example, with our salons, what we're doing, anyone who's bought a voucher has been very supportive. So we're putting them on our VIP list and giving, giving them the opportunity to get the first appointments. But if, for example, they've bought a voucher for something that they can't have at the moment, what we're doing is extending the vouchers for a year instead of six months so that they can redeem it later on. Or you could say, well, you know, you've spent X amount of money with us. Perhaps you'd like a different treatment or perhaps you would like to buy some product. Um, it, it just does depend on your client base and also your the balance of treatments that you do. You know, if you're mainly massage or um, facial based, you, know, you might not be able to get back to those treatments straight away. Um, how are the clients going to feel um, about having money tied up in your business? Um, you know they've actually given you money haven't they but not got anything back from it so i think you need to treat every client that's that's bought a, a voucher perhaps individually and and assess for your business what you might feel is right going forward but definitely you know an extension and also yes if you put the prices up i would i would definitely honor the original price because they have shown support to you for that business but it's up it's up to you to make that decision for your business team to make to make sure that you're profitable Absolutely. Thank you. Well, I think that's pretty much all we've got time for. But thank you so much, Angela. We had loads of questions. And as I say, lots of, um, yeah, lots of thank yous yeah. as well, because I think uh, people found that really, really useful. Yes, good. Well, any other questions, don't hesitate to, to get in touch. And um, thanks once again. And good luck, everybody. And keep well, which is the most important thing. Absolutely. Um, I just noticed we did have a, um, some people saying if they were struggling with sound, we do, you can watch back any of our webinars. If you go to professionalbeauty.co.uk forward slash webinars, there are links to watch back any of our previous webinars there. So if you did have any trouble during this, you can you can always watch them back. But thank you so much, Angela. I really appreciate your time. And thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Goodbye.